Well, Bristol included prolific scorer at Dean Windass in attack, alongside the six foot seven inch Kevin Francis. Swindon, who favoured two wing backs in their recent matches, switched to a 4 4 2 formation. Scott Leach and Ty Gooden returned to the side, with Chris Hay and Sol Davis making way for them. This report by Richard Latham. On a weekend of controversial penalty decisions, Swindon were among the victims, as their derby hopes suffered a major blow on 17 minutes. Dean Windus can do little wrong at the moment, and his direct running brought the spot kick award. But who exactly brought him down? Craig Taylor and Scott Leach led the protests. Preston referee Phil Richards was unmoved. The replay suggests Windus tripped himself, and Swindon had every right to feel aggrieved. Frank Talia did his best to deny the informed striker, but it was 1-0 to Oxford. Windus clearly felt his efforts worthy of greater applause. Swindon did their best to hit back quickly, but if Ionura's shot was charged down, and this was to be the closest they came on a disappointing afternoon. Swindon's offside trap was to pose more problems for them than it did for Oxford. It proved about as watertight as the Titanic, and Kevin Francis should have made it 2 0. Not the most elegant of finishes, and Big Kev knew it. Swindon was still trying to play offside, and Oxford was still capitalising. Paul Tate denied by Talia, who must have wondered where his defence had gone. The first half ended with Swindon under more pressure and Oxford demanding another penalty. Tate was sent tumbling by a challenge from Ty Gooden, but this time the verdict went Swindon's way. And so did the eventual free kick. The second half saw Oxford posing most of the questions again, with Francis, Windass and former Swindon player Joey Beecham heavily involved. This move saw Windass denied before Christopher Remy tried his luck from long distance. The outcome was put beyond doubt nine minutes from time, as Swindon's defence parted like the Red Sea. Good work by Matt Murphy set up fellow substitute Andy Thompson, and although Talia proved equal to his effort, Windass was on hand to net his 18th goal of the season. So a derby to forget for Swindon, who are still too close to the relegation zone for comfort. Yeah, Jim Quinn last week was saying that he, he didn't expect to have a shot on target during that. And it wasn't a good result for them. But what about the first goal and a penalty? Did you think Windass went down on his, uh, of his own accord? Yeah, he did look that way. It's, um, as you see, he's just turned inside here. And the ref can't see much here. He's got two defenders here. And as you see there, he stumbles before he even makes contact. So it's a bit of a controversial decision. But then again, it's hard for the official. Because uh, uh, we've looked at it a few times and we mm. can't quite work out what yeah. it was, but the referee is a no-win situation, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you can't go blaming the official there because he's, he's obviously he's blocked by two players and he's just made a reaction decision. 